So today I saw this announcement from web.dev, which is owned by Google, that JavaScript import maps are supported cross browser. So if you've been following the JavaScript module pattern in browser for a while, this is really big. And with import maps, we can now import ES modules a lot simpler. And here's a blog post about that, but I am going to play with it to see how it works. So let's dive into it. Uh, but before we do that, let's see what are the uh, compatibility across all browsers for this feature. So for import maps, currently all major browsers, the latest version support it, except for IE, but I don't think anybody is using IE right now, it's deprecated. Um, there are some mobile browsers which are still waiting for the implementation, but these are very minor browsers. But across the board, it seems like this feature has been available for uh, most browsers. So yeah, you should feel safe about using it. But what is it exactly? Let's go into it. So here I have a piece of VS Code open. I have a very bare bone HTML file. So how does this work? The way it works is that you have to put a special script tag inside of the head uh, HTML element. So inside of you HTML head, you have to do a script type equals import map. So this tells the browser that this is a special declaration for a set of imports that we want to use. So let me do a bit of um, Let's see, what, what, kind, what can we import? So I wanna do some popular libraries that we can in, import into the browser. And with this, we don't really have to do it all way anymore. So let's have, see how I do it. Let me just paste this in. So as you can see here, I am loading in Lodash and Moments.js. Lodash.js is one of the most popular utility JavaScript packages out there. And then Moment is for time management time manipulation. So these packages usually are available on NPM JS or one of those CDN servers where you can uh, import them like CDN JS, right? Usually you can bring them in somehow like that. But we're gonna do it like this. Now this looks very similar to package JSON, except that we're not really doing package JSON. There is no NPM install, there is no node that I'm using. This is just a plain HTML file. There's no node, there's no NPM, I don't need anything. So that's all you need to bring these two libraries in there. So let's save this. So here I have a simple Python server set up. So it's opening up, it's listening on port 8000. So let's see what happens. So if I only write this portion down in here, and then if I go to the browser here, let me zoom in a little bit. So I want you to look at the network tab, right? So this is where you can see if I refresh the page. So no, that's interesting. Nothing gets loaded yet, even though we define it here. So that's first thing. You define it, but you actually need to use it. So inside of the body tag, let's start using it. This is the body, just to make sure that this, this is showing here. If I refresh, okay, so this is the body. Now inside of the body, this is where you usually define your JavaScript code, right? So let's say we, no, again, reminder, this is an HTML file. So we do have the good old script tab, right? If you wanna put some logic in here, JavaScript in here, you have to enclose them in script tab. Now, what is the difference between, uh, so if you want to use any of these imports from import map in the script, you have to do something extra. So here, you have to actually see, say type module so if you don't do this, then this import thing won't work. So now I'm inside of here. Uh, so one thing I want to I like to do first is I like to feature detect to see if this browser supports this mode. So if the browser doesn't support the mode, this basically does nothing. So I want to do a check here. So if I want to do something like uh, a feature detection, I can type something like this in. So this means that you can do HTML script elements that supports its import map. So this is a feature detection script. It tells you whether the browser supports this feature. So let's save this and refresh in the browser and it says supports. So that means this browser, I'm on the latest Chrome version at you know in May, 2023. So this version supports the, uh, the import map. Great, 
Now we have this feature. We know that this supports import map. Let's import something. So remember, up here, we are telling it to say, hey, I want to use uh, these libraries. Let's look at moments.js. So if you work in any of these minified JS environment or React.js or any of these, like, they, they have the, the ES, you know, the import pattern. So you, in here, you actually write the same code. So you can import moments from moments. So this should look really similar, com, uh, familiar to you if you use to React or you know any modern day client side JavaScript tooling. So now I have this whole thing here, right? I, I am bringing in the moment JS, uh, but let's observe in the browser what the behavior is. So if I press save now and then I refresh, so nothing happens. But look at this. What's interesting is that let's do it again. So as you can see moment.js gets loaded right here it's 29 kilobytes and as you can see the url this thing is from this external location right so the reason there are two calls is that this uh the package the the host i use here so this what this does is that it goes to here and then it makes an extra call to the actual moment.js library so that's why you see two calls but normally when you put something in there it should only make one call uh, because this does some sort of redirect to, Im to import the code, the proper package. So now the second one is what you should look at. This is the actual moment.js library, 29 kilobytes. And you know, if you want to open a new tab, you can see this is a flow source code for moment.js. So it's automatically, as soon as I type import moment.js, it automatically imports the whole library from the, the external source that I defined in the import map. So now we can norm, we can just use norm, moment JS like so. So you know this is a normal moment call and then I do this I press let's go to the browser. So if I do everything right there you go. So now this is the output from the console log. So I'm actually using moment JS in the browser in the HTML <laughs> index HTML file inside of a script tab. Isn't that crazy? So this is like, let me uh, make this smaller for you. This whole thing here, now you don't even need like, a, you know, a web pack or whatever to do all of this. This is all natively available in the browser. So now that's just an example of, you know, uh, moment.js. I can do the same for Lodash. Now, Lodash, there's some weird thing happening. Uh, so let's do an example first, right? So same thing with Lodash, you can do it, uh, imports. So you can actually do um, import for Lodash in the standard way. So if I want to do a flatten function, right, from Lodash, flatten. So this is how you import that function. And, you know, if I want to call it, so here, and then console log order users. Well, I could call it anything. So let me just call order numbers. Not order, flatten numbers. So let's do that and then we refresh. It takes a second for the thing to load. Oh. Does not provide a nice sound. So there's some like weird thing going on. Actually, this is actually the right syntax. Refresh. So I'm actually getting the actual flattened function from the Lodash, right? And there you go. So it, uh, Lodash works, but there is some caveat that I discovered is that I cannot directly import Lodash min like this from let's say CDNJS or any of these hosts. So look what happens if I do this, right? If I get it from here, so to me, this is very interesting behavior. A lot of uh, CDN hosts right now could not do this for import maps because they are not optimized for import maps. So the reason I'm using skypack.dev is that they optimize these, the hosted you know, package to support import maps. So that's why I'm sticking with this for now. And it's still early. I bet all of these uh, like CDNJS will eventually catch up with a version of import map 
uh, optimized version for uh, these popular libraries like Lodash. Now let's talk about uh, one other way of importing extra uh, something. So remember in back in the day when we made uh, web pages, you usually have a, you know, a JavaScript file like this, right? And then you would bring into your HTML file and then you do all this stuff. Well, now we wanna do something similar. This time, except the syntax here in this say hi.js, it's gonna be very similar to ES6, right? ES20, more modern ES development. So you could do ex uh, export default function, say hi. So let's just have a random hi function and then it'll say alert, yay, it works. So that's all there is in this function, right? So it, it exports a function called say hi. So now inside of here, I am going to import that to the index file. So again, similar to package JSON. Now I'm just gonna say say hi. And then now you can actually do relative pathing. So you can do say hi.js, right? Now you can actually say it have a module like this. So now if I go here, I can say import, uh, I'll put it on top. Import say hi from say hi module. And then I can just invoke the function, right? Say hi and call it. So all this does is say with an alert, it says, yeah, it works. So let's go to the browser and see if how this works. So if, I, if everything worked correctly, I'll get a uh, alert box that says say hi yeah it works there you go now you probably notice something is that this say hi box this alert box happens way after the other modules are loaded because of this you know skybox cdn it takes a while to load right so they are loading in order so you got to keep that in mind so i wonder if i move this one up a little if i move this one up what happens there, right? So if I move this one up, will my load time, will it do the say hi first? No, so it actually waits for all the other ones to get loaded first, and then this script says hi. But let's say I disable this, right? Let's say I don't want to use Lodash. I don't want to import. I just want to Im import say hi. So this should immediately give me a box. There you go. So it does have this weird behavior where the external script will always try to load when you use, if you ever use external script, it will try to load that externally and then it loads the local file. So this is a bit bothersome to me, obviously. And then the other big thing to remember is that you're now loading an external script directly. So, you know, we've been doing that also, so in traditionally, but now you're actually loading in code on an external source. So let's say this company got hacked, skypack.dev got hacked, and somebody loaded in a malicious file here. So now what happens? Now this could potentially have been a vector or attack on your website. So I would stay away from companies that you don't know, you don't familiar with, but I would go with a trusted company like CDNJS or NPM or something like that. But still, it's still a vector or an attack. Anytime you ex import an ex external script, it has, a vec it has an opportunity for them to attack your website. So that is it for this tutorial. It's a very, very easy, simple introduction to import maps, and hopefully we'll get more traction to it. Uh, right now, at the moment, I don't think I will use this for my day-to-day -day because our current front-end client-side tooling is so good, and a lot of code is already written with that in mind. But I'm very excited to see what going forward, how this works, and how much of this will eventually become native in the browser, and then we will might eventually get rid of Webpack, right? So right now there's no minification for things like that, but hopefully eventually we will have something good. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys like it. Make sure to visit my sponsor on the description box below, and I will see you guys in the next video.